care on this one. Hi, I'm Don Bodin from SampleLibraryReview.com, and today we're going to be checking out Spitfire Symphonic Motions by Spitfire Audio. It seems every summer is string summer nowadays, and Spitfire's got a brand new Spitfire Symphonic Motions continuing their symphonic series with what promises to be an, an inspirational tool offering flexibility and design with expressive shorts to create intricate rhythm patterns with ease. Spitfire Symphonic Motions downloads as 13 gigabytes. It's a string ensemble recorded with 22 violins and 12 cellos, and it's performances with reboing movement, rhythms, and playing techniques recorded in the hall at Air Studios. This library includes 40 different articulations with seven playing techniques, four different rhythmic patterns with six eighths, twelfths, and sixteenths. There's six additional overlay techniques for accents and blending. And it does run in Spitfire Audio's NKS Ready standalone plugin, which gives you three microphone positions for close, tree, and ambient. There's three curated mixes included, and the entire instrument functions with this grid interface. The library normally sells for $249 on a special intro price of $199 till July 30th, 2020. And if you already own Spitfire Symphonic Strings, Spitfire Symphonic Evolutions, Chamber Strings, or Chamber Springs Professional, be sure and log in to check your price because I think you get it for 40% off and that offer ends August 2nd, 2020. Now, before we dig into checking out the instrument, I'm going to share a quick little demo that I mocked up getting to learn about the Spitfire Symphonic Motions. I also used a number of other Spitfire libraries, including Orbis, Hans Zimmer Professional, and Symphonic Chamber Strings. I've got Spitfire Symphonic Motions up and ready for us to check out for the first time together. This is a first look video. All the videos that the developers put out, they've taken weeks to plan and perfect. This video is showing us what we get right out of the box. All right, I'm just going to shut up and play through a bunch of stuff first so we can hear the instrument. Then we'll discuss it and experiment. <laughs> Yeah, that was a little unexpected with that much effects going on. A lot of, uh, craziness in that. Thank you. 
Yeah, that one is nice. It kind of blurs the line between traditional string sound and something a little more affected. And I'm just starting to play with our uh, expression. You could see we've got some really nice dynamic layers there. That's nice there with the conlengo and the pizzicato together. I really like that one. That one before that, that was really far out. I thought, is this broken? It just sounds so weird. Um, I really didn't expect this instrument to have so much variety from just a classical um, string sound to something more hybrid. <laughs> Again, that one, you know, it's it's hybrid. It's not quite a pure string sound. It's really interesting. Yeah, just a couple notes there. What, what I'm finding is that uh, partially because I've got my uh, buffer a little higher than usual, uh, it's hard. It's a little hard for me to get it to sync exactly just by playing on the keyboard. Things that are easily fixed once you're playing uh, and programming in your DAW. Um, let's move on. Let's just, just some of the more of these. I am noticing that um, it does take. A couple seconds to get the instruments loaded up, and it doesn't have a, you know, there's no indicator to tell you it's loading. So sometimes I go to play a, the keyboard and nothing happens, and I'm like, uh, is it broken? And then I wait a second and it starts, it's, it'll play again. So let's continue on with the Sixth Sense preset. <laughs> Yeah, that one's really cool. 
I could see why they they said this one is all about inspiration because it is a pretty cool. Uh, it's inspiring me to kind of come up with little little pieces on the fly. <laughs> cool let's do a few more of these presets and then we'll move on to experimenting a bit Right, so I've got the presets that are built in. I played through, um, I think I played through most of them. And what I think is kind of cool is they've got the ability to sort by tag, simple, complex, clean, and distorted. And you're also able to star them and save your presets as you make them. Uh, there is a randomization here. Let's just go with feeling lucky, click it. Uh, you can click inside here to automatically look at that colorful rainbow. Each of the keys, um, the color coding is designating which sample set you'll play back. So down here at uh, C1, you can see we're playing in the conlango. really hear that tape saturation on this preset here. Let's go ahead and uh, go again. All right, and see what we can see there is we're playing uh, the Saltasto and some normal down here, it looks like. Maybe not. Maybe it's a combination up here. Let's go over here. Start with the beginning. We'll listen to the different variations. We've got normal variation. Yeah, let's clean this thing up. We don't need any tape saturation. We don't need 
any delay. Let's pull our bit reverb back. Come on. Oh. There we go. Now, I don't... Ah, uh, or overlay. Right here, we've got an overlay. So everything I play is going to have a conlingo attack. I'm going to turn it off just so we can listen to the sample set. sample playback here you can hear that it's playing repetitions and if you have a microscope you can see that it says the subdivision it's playing back here luckily when you hover over with your mouse down in the corner here it gives you some info in case um, you don't have a giant monitor or um, some big old spectacles 2x spectacles let's listen to the rest of these here I'm going to go ahead and turn uh, my reverb off if I can get it to go here. It's easier right here. There we go. We're getting the idea. Oh, we've checked out the Consordino, the Soltasto, Conlingo we heard. And now we have Ostinados. A little neat little Jaws thing. And that's cool. That's just uh, some, um, some like glissandos, uh, some grace notes up there. So each of these sample sets, each of these samples goes all the way across the keyboard. And uh, looks like we've got ways to randomize with specific feel. So now we've done a randomization with the hard. Now we'll do one with randomizing the soft. Discrete. normal so it's playing the uh the combination of different normal sample sets normal articulations i should say and a consordino If we don't like that one, we could just keep clicking. It's going to move those samples around. Okay, we've got continued randomization, soul pont randomizations. Uh, 
Pasto. And then we've got variations. On different uh, subdivisions. And this is kind of cool. You could do whatever's visible. So if I scroll down here. This one just moves them, looks like a tiny bit in one direction or the other. So let's go ahead and go to something with uh, go with some corn sordino. So now we got something soft. Now we can add our overlay, and this will add as our accent. So if I just do with the con lingo, it's going to get that snap. And we can do something with uh, pizzicato, just give it a little round bottom. Auto attack. And because we've got a contrast between our concertino, or rather soft kind of playing, and our spiccato attack. That spiccato attack really cuts through when we're doing a low expression. And it's velocity sensitive uh, as well, which is really nice. It gives you a little bit more uh, ability to express just with the keyboard. inspired. I'm going to write something. I'll come back. We'll continue on. So let's continue on and uh, listen to how we could use maybe like uh, these ostinatos. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll use a randomize feature. Randomize on uh, they don't have a randomize on ostinatos, do they? Well, let's see. Uh... We 
Yeah, that's pretty cool. I love the the ostinatos playing off each other. Lots of possibilities within these, I could tell already. Things I didn't touch base on here is the ability to just uh, select um, individual or articulations by, I'm on a Mac, so I'm command clicking each of these. You can click it twice and it'll unload everything. So that's kind of a nice way to quickly play around with that. You've also got pans and um, volume on this side, as well as the effect sends, which we didn't touch too much on in the video. We just kind of discussed it in some of the presets. Uh, the back here with these mixes, they've got a mix that's a full body mix, a second mix, which is a balance of room and close, and a third mix, which can touch of hall, perfect for getting a close perspective with depth. And what do you know? That was the one I kind of gravitated towards as I played around with them myself. I always love being able to have the close mic as well as some room and just get a tiny bit of that close mic, but really let that room ring out. All right, guys, I am out of time, but I really enjoyed checking out Spitfire's Symphonic Motions here. I think it's one of those libraries that... It's going to be just like they said, it delivers inspiration. It delivers the opportunity to play around, get something new, which can be extremely valuable when you're doing underscore or you're in a time crunch. You're just trying to find something to grab onto that'll add cinematic depth and orchestral texture to a piece. And I think the sample set sounds fantastic. The engine, um, I had a little trouble uh, with my CPU with my screen recording on. So my big worry was that we'd load up a whole bunch of instances of this instrument and it would choke up my system. It did not. Um, as I was working with the little mock-up I played around with and shared at the beginning of the video, uh, you hear that it plays back smoothly even with my screen capturing on. So. What's the story with CPU usage and the buffers, and RAMs like that? I think it's one of those things where you have to play around, find what's comfortable for you, what works well with your system. Not everybody's going to be doing screen recording, so nobody's, everybody's going to have that obstacle that I have fighting with your screen recording, trying to use up your resources. It's going to be fantastic for people doing underscore. I'm sure trailer composers are going to gravitate towards this just for the inspiration factor and the super high quality of sounds that these performances are delivering. The ability to work with the engine, with the randomization, is, again, another great inspirational factor. And the, um, the other thing I really did like about it is the ability to go in and dabble with the three different mixes they provided as well as that close tree i think i commented quite a bit about that so who's it for like i said blend perfectly well with anything you've done anything you're doing with bitfire's symphony orchestra recorded in air studios hall so it's kind of a just a great expansion tool for that universe love to hear what you think about the library please comment below always appreciate knowing what you think about these instruments it helps guide me as to what i should be reviewing next or what i should be checking out next like share and subscribe I always love your support be sure to head over to samplelibrarereview.com for latest news reviews and our weekly deals page